I want to encourage you this morning. If there's a way that you need made, there's a way maker out there. And his name is Jesus. If you need a miracle this morning, there's a miracle worker. And his name is Jesus. If you got a promise that you've been praying and you've been standing on this from God's word and his will, he's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. And if you need a light to light up your darkness, his name is Jesus. Lord, we just pray that you be glorified this morning. God, I pray you take over the teaching. I take over the listening, Lord. Father, if there's anybody in here that does need their way, to find their way, they need that miracle. They need that promise that they've been standing on to come to pass, Lord. And they need the light in the darkness. That they would turn to you, only you, because you have the market cornered on all of that. Lord, thank you for being our peace. And thank you for the act that it took to make all that stuff happen. Lord, we're forever grateful. And we thank you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. The only Savior of the world, and everybody says, Amen. 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 I like Pete's Amen. 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 Y'all give the Lord a hand this morning. Yes, Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. If you have your Bible, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Everybody doing all right this morning? You ready to get into this word? You know, that word is your, uh, what do you call it? Your uh, uh, instruction manual for life. You can't put together a swing set. You can't even put together a little action figure without having an instruction manual. There's no way that we can do our life without knowing our instruction manual. And our life and our instruction manual is that Word of God. This Word of God right here from Genesis to Revelation is anything and everything that you would ever want to know about your life and about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All right, so 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 3, verse 18. Let's read. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Anybody want to see the glory of the Lord? You remember Moses. Moses was meeting with, with the Lord up on the hill that day, up on that mountain. And, and he, he was like so in love with Jesus. And he's or so in love with God. And he said, hey, show me your glory. He said, show me your glory. Please show me your glory. And God's like, you cannot look upon me and even live. You can't handle my glory. <laughs> right? He says, I tell you what, I'm going to cover you in this little rock right here. He says, I'm going to pass by. And all you can see, the Bible says it's his hinder parts. Like all he could see is his backside, but really what all he could see was his exhaust fumes as he went by. That's about all we can handle right now, right, is his exhaust fumes, but he's a good God. So it says this, it says that we are being transformed into that same image that we see in the mirror. And it says from glory to glory only by the Spirit of the Lord. So let me tell you this again, that this is a picture of us looking into a mirror. All of us, I hope all of us looked into a mirror this morning and made sure there wasn't something in your nose. And you fixed your hair. Some of you ladies uh, fixed your hair last night, and so you was kind of laying real gentle on that pillow, right? And so you, when you looked in the mirror this morning, make sure your CPAP didn't, didn't make marks in your face. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I got to do that too. Anyway, I don't even know how you get the marks out. You just, I guess you just wrote. Anyway, so you're looking into this mirror. Okay, and you're seeing the image of God. Okay, but you're looking at yourself, but then you look back and you see God, and you're like, man, that just doesn't make any sense, right? But what you're doing is actually seeing who you're created to be. Can you imagine that? You're seeing who God has created you to be. You you see yourself minus the fear. You see yourself minus the doubt. You see yourself minus the guilt. 
And minus the shame, minus the worry, minus the pride, minus the lust, minus yourself. And you see that image and you see who God is calling you to be. You see yourself minus the lies of the devil that is holding you back. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that a beautiful picture? Now, this is not crazy because in Genesis 1.27, God says, I created you in my image. In my image. So you're looking at like who you could be in the Lord. And notice what it says. It says you're being transformed into that image from glory to glory. If you know Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior in here this morning, he saved you. He brought you out of the pit of darkness, out of your sin, and he saved you. Okay? By doing that, then he, big word, sanctifies you. He sets you apart for his work and for his glory. It's just like you set something over here because you're going to use it, right? He sets you here because he wants to use you, okay? All right? So this process of him setting you apart is a transformation where who you used to be falls off of you, okay? Uh, well, who you used to be, your old mindsets, your, 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 how you used to roll, okay, that stuff falls off of you progress, prog- progressively. Help me out, somebody. And it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, how long did it take you to stop cussing? You know what I'm saying? I mean, some of you still struggle with that. So it's a progressive thing, all right? This is what's being transformed. This is how, and then one day he's going to come back and get us and we'll be with him forever. But this process... Is, is what he's doing to us to turn us into more glory to glory. So last week we started this new series that we're calling Next Level. Okay? No, there's not levels in Christianity, right? There, what level are you on, you know? It, it's not like that. But what's cool is that you don't struggle uh, today like you did yesterday. Make sense? Okay. So you've taken a step up. Like the devil used to get me like this. Yesterday, but he ain't gonna get me there like that's today because I've learned from that. So you go level to level. So what we're doing, we're looking at biblical principles that will help you to take that next step is what this is all about. Now, last week we looked at vision, uh, godly vision. What does that mean? It's, it's having a godly br- blueprint for your life. Okay, uh, when you're going to build something, when you're going to do something, you have a blueprint or you have a vision in your head. Okay, what is God calling you to do? What has he gifted you with personally, whether it's a gift like the, the, these that we're singing and, and, and playing this morning, God has gifted that, them to do that. They're not doing it up in a club somewhere. No, they're doing it for the glory of God. Okay, they have a vision to glorify their life, our worship team, glorify God's life through what he has created them to do. Every one of us in here have been created and, and been special gifts. Some of you are hard workers. Some of you serve. Some of you have these, these amazing create, creative ideas, and, and God uses that to advance his kingdom in your life. Okay? So what is your godly vision? Is it, is it, is it, is it God's vision for your life? Uh, used to, I'd have a short-term vision, right? Uh, my, my, here was my vision. Friday's paycheck. Okay? <laughs> Friday's paycheck was my vision, yeah. right? And if that was my vision, then guess what would happen by Sunday? That paycheck was gone. So, bologna sandwiches, sometimes bread, sometimes not bread, depending on how... <laughs> You don't spend all your money on Friday, Saturday, Sunday because your short-term vision was Friday's paycheck, then it was gone. And then you struggle the rest of it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. No, I'm talking about having a long-term, having a vision, God's vision for your life. Okay. So, next week, uh, this week, what's the day? Sunday. That's why y'all here. (laughs) The next level, and and, and you're not going to, you may not even get this, but I'll explain it to you. That's why we're here. To go to the next level, what I want to talk about today is something I want to call molting. <laughs> You're going, what kind of church have I come up in? Visitors are going, what, what, what? They finna break out the snakes. Uh, no, I'm going to explain it to you. Molting <laughs> will take you to the next level. Turn to Psalm 103. I'll show you what molting is. Don't run out right now. I like using these types of words because then you go, huh. And then maybe you'll pay attention a little bit longer before you go to sleep. 
or before you start thinking about what you're about to eat. And I probably shouldn't have said that because now you're thinking, hey, where are we going to go? <laughs> Listen, I got it planned out but a week ahead of time where I'm going to go eat because uh, it's how serious it is. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> Psalm 103. Y'all, y'all not laughing much today. You scared? <laughs> okay. <laughs> psalm 103. Let's start in verse 1. Now, let me just tell you what this is. This is a psalm that King David wrote. Remember uh, 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 David and Goliath? Yeah. Same David. Okay. He's older. You're writing these things down. Here's what he's saying this, and this is why we should pay attention. Uh, he's telling us some benefits of serving Jesus. Right? Okay. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. That's, some people pray before they eat. And I pray before I eat and after, and I pray that right there. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is now within me. Bless his holy name. Y'all ain't laughing today. I ain't, I'm going to stop telling jokes. Okay. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Watch what he says. For not, forget not all his benefits. Watch this. Who forgives all of your iniquity? Oh, that's heavy. To me, that's heavy right off the bat because I don't know about you, but I've done some stupid stuff. I've made some bad decisions. I've hurt people. I've, I've, I'm, I, was, I was just rotten. So thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. Amen? Okay. Who heals all your diseases. In other words, that he has authority over any sickness and any disease. And if it's his will, he will heal you. Now, he does use sickness and disease to shape us. To get us through some things. How many, how many of us have been sick and have went through some things, but, but going through that, it's made you a better person? Most, most all of us. Right. Okay, look at the next one. Who redeems your life from destruction. Hallelujah. I lived a destructive life. Redeem means he went and purchased my life, and he saved me from destruction. Right? Okay, look at the next thing. Who crowns you with loving kindness. These are beautiful things, right? And, and, and close us with tender mercies. You know what a mercy is? Mercy is not getting what we deserve. All of us deserve death, right? But no, he loves us. He closes us and crowns us with this. And he satisfies your mouth with good things. Come on, somebody. Now, here's molting right here. I'll show you. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, there you go. That's why I want to camp out today, right there. You're like, what in the world is he talking about this morning? Okay, molting. An eagle can renew itself. Okay, so can you. Listen to me. An eagle, now we've been studying about, I'm bringing Wednesday to Sunday today because we've been studying eagles and, and how God uses the eagle. And that's what we've been doing on Wednesday nights, by the way. But, but I, want, I want to bring this to you tonight. Here's what an eagle does. An eagle will sit down and begin to remove old feathers, the weak feathers, the dead feathers off of his body. You hear me? That's molting. It's not something weird, all right? Over time, think about it, an eagle will have dirt, all the elements actually just ruin his feathers. Over time, it will weigh him down where he can't soar like he used to. Making sense? Okay, and so here's what they do. They, they slowly, because this is a six-month process, this is not overnight where he like loses all of his feathers and he looks like he's got the mange, okay? <laughs> okay, that's not what he's talking about. Then he'd be naked and he'd be like, it's cold out here, hurry, feather, hurry, you know? Anyway, uh, he gets eagle bumps. Yeah, okay, not goosebumps. <laughs> hey, y'all got that one. Yeah, and that was a cheesy one too. Anyway, yeah, that was a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what it is. It's a six-month process. So that eagle, we begin to pick out those old feathers, those weak feathers, those dead feathers, one by one, and then they begin to grow back. Think about that concept in your life. You remove what's old, you remove what's weak, and you remove what's dead and become made new. You see that? You mean to tell me that that... 
that the bad choices I've made and the dirt and the, and the grime, the, 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 you mean all that can be removed and I can have new feathers? Absolutely. That's the way God made an eagle. What was weak and what was old and what I don't need anymore, hey, I can fly again. Guys, listen, you do see your life in that, right? If you want us to take this next step and go the next level and go in the right direction with your life in the Lord, we have to get rid of the old things, the dead things. We got to get rid of those things that are dragging you down, those things that you do not need in your life anymore. And I'm not talking about your spouse. Because I saw y'all look at you, the other one and say, hey, hey, I, you old weak and I don't need you around anymore. No, I'm not talking about that. Okay? I'm talking about the things that are in your life right now that you're hanging on to and you know without a shadow of a doubt that that stuff needs to go. How do you know that it needs to go? Because it's damaging you and it's weakening you. What in your life right now is causing you damage? What is weakening you right now? Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Go back to your, the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 4. You can look at the screen. People say, well, I don't know where the books are in the Bible. Here's how I learned. Uh, I flip there. When somebody says, hey, go to this where, I, I flip there. And guess what? God's made a memory and some of them are better than others, that you, you remember, hey, this was there, or this was there, or this was there, right? right. Okay. Or you have the new style, and you just go, huh, there it is. Beep, beep, beep. Right? Okay, so let me get, bring you back here. What right now, seriously, take inventory of your life. All right? What's dragging you down right now? Go ahead and take your spouse out of that. All right? What's dragging you down? What is grieving the Spirit of God that lives within you? By saying that, you know what I mean. Like, okay, you're about to do something, and the Lord, you see it as the angel on one side and the devil on the other, whatever. That's kind of right, but, but it's the Spirit of God that lives in you. He's not on your shoulder. He's in you. And he goes, don't do that. Don't do that. You're like, and you can justify it, you know, and you go ahead and do it. And then it's like, the Spirit of God, you can feel him in you going, oh, man, I thought we'd gotten past that. And then you're like, oh, why did I do that? You know, I'm talking about that thing, okay? What's dragging you down? What's grieving the Holy Spirit? What is hindering you from being who God called you to be? Ephesians 4 verse 22 says this, put off, somebody say put off, put off. concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. That's a mouthful. Former conduct, old man, okay, which grows corrupt because of your selfish lust. Okay? It's not corrupt, but it grows corrupt, right? But what is, what is the Apostle Paul telling us right here? It's just to put that stuff off, okay? So your former conduct, your old person, is your old feathers. I mean, if you want to go with that, you can go with it. I mean, if you want to try to go around with them old feathers, just, uh, you know, an eagle, is, an eagle is created to soar above storms, yeah. right? They, they, they even build their nests like 75 feet up in the air, right? But and if, you got, if you got old dead and old feathers and... Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of them missing half the wings and stuff. Like, and you just kind of like this. How are you even going to get to the house? Your house is up there. It's 75 foot. How are you going to get up there? You know, when all you got to do is pluck it out. And it will grow back new and grow back fresh. God is saying that to us, church. I want to tell you something. I, I've truly... Ben said it this morning, there comes a time when you just actually get it. You finally wake up. You see who Jesus is. For me, that was 27 years. At 27 years old. Okay? Better than three years ago. <laughs> nah, nah, that made you laugh. Man. Okay. God 
was dealing with me, man. Especially these these days, these these few days, and it's like he was like he was showing me, okay, all the things that my grandparents had taught me, all the things that I'd heard in church whenever I would go, and like this Jesus guy, like he really loved me so much that he came to this earth, and he he would, I, I pictured him being tied to that whipping post, and beaten. It was amazing. I saw that before even the passion even come out. Like, I saw it in my mind. Like, God showed me that. Like, he was beaten over and over and over, untied, flipped him over, tied him, beat him over and over and over till his bones were showing. Beard pulled out. Blood. It was a massacre, right? God showed me that. Hey, I did that for you. And guess what? He says, he says, he says, he said this. He said, and I didn't even have to. He said, at any moment, I said, that's enough. I'm going back to heaven. This is not worth it. And not at one time did he do that, right? And all this was just rolling around like, man, if he did that for me, and he didn't just do it for me, he did it for all of us, but he did it for our sin because our sin had to be paid for. And he showed me all those bad decisions I was make, making and all those things I was doing is what he died for. So how could I, how could I, because I, I, I was picturing every time they would hit him, Remember, remember the cat of nine tails? They would hit him and it had the little rock in it and they would pull it and it would pull his flesh off. That, that was my bad decision and that was my sin. Bam! What rip? So I was thinking if I continue that lifestyle, they're just hitting Jesus more. And everything within me wanted, him, wanted them to stop hitting Jesus. Stop hitting Jesus. But that's what it took because that was our sin. So why do we want to continue in that? Because it's just like he's up there just getting hit, stripped, hit, ripped. I can't stand that, y'all. So it came, it came to fruition. I was in my truck, and, 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 and I pulled over on the side of the road. And we're talking about putting stuff off. Man, I left a lot of stuff on the side of the road that day. I even, I even had a, I had like the double stack CD case, right? Hey, like, and it was full of, 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 of belly rub and music. Like, I love the slow jam, right? And, and I'd play the slow jam. But you know, all that's just about, you know what it's about. And, and, and all the, the easy E's and the NWA's and all the, you know, the gangsters and all, and then all the, I killed my dog and my wife. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Lord said, that'd be your first move. We got to get these negative thoughts and this negative music out of your life. He asked me, he asked me, this is, this is, he wasn't sitting there talking to me, but he was in the spirit. And, and he said, you need to throw that out the window. Now I was thinking, man, I can sell this thing. I can sell that. He said, no, you're not going to sell it. You're not going to sell that. You need to get rid of it. And I, man, I went, whew, I throw that out, the, out my window of my truck, and it hit over there in the grass somewhere. Pull it on the side of, off the road. Here I go. And he would remind me as the days would go forward that, hey, you need to put this off. I ain't going to lie. I was a professional cusser. He showed me I need to put that off. Yeah. He showed me that I need to put my pride off. And here's what's the hardest one. You need to put that selfishness off. And one of the hardest things, and, 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 and I may be up here by myself, but I don't think I am. One of the hardest things I ever put off was anger. Anger. So this is what I'm talking about this morning, church. Pride, selfishness, anger, lust, these bad habits that we have, right? He wants us, that, that negative attitude that we that whining and complaining, he wants us to leave that mess on the side of the road today. Put off your former conduct. He goes on to say to put off your old man. Let me just ask you like this, those of you that have kids and grandkids. Do you want your kids imitating your old man? You want to see your child doing what you used to do. Okay? Quit doing it. Many of your kids only drank because you drank like a fish. Many of the kids smoke and, and, and do things they don't suppose because they saw mom and daddy doing it and they say it was okay. I ain't trying to be hard on you. I'm just saying there's some, there's some things that we need to put off in our life. Amen. Luke 9.62 says this. It says, No one putting his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. 
Did you hear that? What does that mean? Okay, you've made a decision to honor God with your life. Let's plow the field. Amen? Right? Well, wait a minute. You remember what I used to do? I was the man. You remember? You remember? You, oh, yeah. And what's happening to your plow now? Oh, I mean, you, you, yeah, you're like, you, you drive by that guy's field, and you're like, well, he must have been drinking when he, he was plowing that field. I mean, his rows are going like this and back like this. No, he's looking back. He's distracted. If you've put your hand to the plow and you want to honor God with your life, listen to me. Quit looking back. I mean, what, what happened to Lot's wife? I call her Miss Salt. What'd she do? Okay, God let him get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was full of filthy stuff, right? Okay, said, whatever you do, don't look back. Well, they're out journeying, right? And God just destroyed the whole city, right? So they're, they're leaving. And what she do? I want to go back. It, it wasn't like she wanted to see the fire, firecrackers and the fireworks. No, she wanted, she, it was a longing look to want to go back. And as soon as she longed to go and look back, she turned to a pillar of salt. Okay, a pillar of salt. I used to think it was like a pillow you lay your head on, but no, it's like a pillar. <laughs> anyway. So every time you shake salt on your fries or whatever, you think of, of Lot's wife, right? That she looked back. And you think about, am I, am I really, did I commit? Am I moving forward or not? Because there's no halfway. You don't go with the plow, turn it off, and go do your thing. Hey, uh-uh. You put your hand to the plow, let's go. He says, pick up your cross and follow me. Yeah. Those things, guys, that represent our old nature... How many of us are trying to carry it over to our new nature? Huh? Now, that'll get in your kitchen a little bit. Because you're like, okay, this can go, this can go. Uh, that's not going to go. I'm going to take this. And you just start filling yourself up like, okay, bye, y'all. But you're still taking this over into your new nature. Okay, you took your anger, you took your worry, you put your fear. You know, you, did, you chose a few things to take. We, I don't fly, but... Y'all know what I'm talking about. There's some things you can carry on a plane with you and some things you can't. Right? right? You get a carry-on bag or something. I just watch TV. That's how I know this. I ain't getting no airplane. Airplane's got to fly down here and hit me. Anyway, <laughs> if it's going to get me. But you know what I'm saying. What are you carrying on with your flight to, with Jesus? What have you carried on? Open up a window and throw it out. Okay? Habits. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Addictions. Struggles. Uh-oh, friends. Listen, let me tell you about friends. Boy, I lost a ton. But this, here's, what I, here's what I did. I didn't lose friends. I lost folks that just want to hang around with me. True friends will go, will go with you through that. Okay? And here's what they end up doing. When they go start going through some stuff, they'll come to you and like, Hey, tell me what went down in your life because I want a piece of that. And that's, what, that's real friends. Th those acquaintances are just... Just, right, they'll just fall by the wayside. Okay, but, but, but some of us need to let, let that go. Language. Some of, some of us still struggling with our language. Places that you still go. So, some of us may need to, hey, it's all right. Okay, but don't let that place drag you down. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody, some of us is carrying on old feelings, carrying excuses, carrying mindsets. You do realize racism is wrong. Are you telling me just because of the color of your skin, that's going to change the way I think of you? You've got to be kidding me, right? Can you really choose? Did you really stand before the Lord and say, I want to be white, I want to be black, I want to be yellow? No, you didn't do that. Absolutely not. No, God chose you who you are, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And for us to look at another human being as less than, that's ridiculous, and that is from the, from the enemy. It's a lie. It's a dadgum lie, by the way. Right? But, okay, listen. And, but, we, but, but it's been passed down because we're from the south or whatever, and it's always going to be like that or whatever. No, absolutely not. The, 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 here's what, listen, Mark 7, 13 says this. Jesus said it. He said, we can make God's word of no effect by our traditions. Stuff that we hand down. My papa and my daddy would like this, so I'm going to be like this. That's a bunch of mess, y'all. No, here's what needs to be handed down, God's Word. 
Listen, this, this may hit some folks hard. I'm going to put it on the screen. Lamentations 5, verse 7. And you may, you may have been wondering this, and it's true. Okay? It says, our fathers have sinned. This could be grandfathers, great-grandfathers, daddies, somebody in your family, right? It's just been a way of, of life in your family. They have sinned. They may be gone, right? They may not be gone. They may be gone. But we, as the kids, bear their iniquity. Iniquity means a lifestyle of sin, a lifestyle of bad choices. Could be racism, could be habits, could be a mindset, could be any of this stuff. And just happens to be passed down from generation to generation. You know, I don't know what I'm talking about. You, you got, well, they just like their daddy, or they just like their uncle, and it bless their heart. Oh, he, what, what, what happened to old Johnny? Yeah, he got locked up for 10 years. Oh, he's just like his daddy. I mean, really? Really? <laughs> Do, do we really have to bear that? Do you think that's really God's will for your family? That is what we call a generational curse that is passed down in your family from generation to generation. Just because your daddy's a drunk, your great granddaddy's a drunk, doesn't mean you got to be a drunk. You need to be sober. You got a family to raise. You got a God to glorify with your, with your life. You ain't got time for that. Remember that lady on. on, on <laughs> would you just look at that? No. no. <laughs> Somebody, somebody say that right now. I ain't got time for that. Those of you that try to do proper grammar, you won't say it, but well, how do you say that proper? I, I do not have time for that. Somebody say that. I do not have to, Anyway. Is anybody feeling me this morning? Because generational curses are just old feathers that need to be plucked out. And Jesus will give you the strength to pluck it out. It can fall today. It doesn't have to go any... You, you may have brought it in, but it doesn't have to leave these doors today. It, it does not have to leave here today. Hallelujah. You know what the de definition of insanity is? I want to put this on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Idea of doing the same thing, expecting a different result. That's insane. Worrying about it. That's insane. What has worry got you? Nairn, you know. What has fear gotten you? Nairn. Right? Nothing. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Listen, the only way we're going to get out of the ditch is, is remove what's pushing you in the ditch. Seriously. If something's pushing you in the ditch, get away from it. Listen, Hebrews 12. Let me read this to you. It says, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Love this verse. It says that we're, we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Do you believe this? Especially if you say, man, I gave my life to the Lord. And you tell your friends that, listen, man, I'm really trying to do right with my life. I can't be doing that stuff like we used to do. And, you, and, and people at your work, they know that you're trying to not cuss anymore. They know you're trying to honor God with your life. Guess what? You have just painted yourself neon. Like you, 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 you like the neon sign down at the club, right? Because pe people can see you. People are looking at you like, man, I... Okay, they're watching you. And, and a lot of them, they're wanting you to fail. Yeah. A lot of them want you to catch you in the hypocrite thing, right? Like you say one thing, do another. So, so you're surrounded by this cloud of witnesses. So here's what the Word of God says. It says to lay aside every weight. What's a weight? Something that's pulling you down, right? Yeah. It says lay aside every weight, right? Every weight and sin that easily entangles you, that easily trips you up. If you know what you struggle with, get away from it. Eliminate it. If Facebook's your struggle, struggle punt that thing. Boom, right? You know what I'm saying? Drop kick that, that your, your phone or whatever it is. Hey, I'm telling y'all, Facebook was a, was a thing that drug me down. Man, I, I just get in, I just get depressed looking at some of this stuff. And then you, get, then you just get sad because then the people you see, what, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Man, the best thing I did was go in and hit that delete button. And I'm telling you, it's freed my life up. Guess what? I can actually be a daddy again. Yeah. I can be a daddy again. I can be a friend again. Like I can I could, I could, I could, I could, I could be a better pastor again because I, got, I eliminated that stuff that was dragging me down. Yeah. I know it can be used for good, but it sure is being used for bad. Watch this. So lay aside the weight, the sin that easily snares us. Let us run. Run with endurance. 
You can't run very far with something on your back. Right? Watch this. Run the race that sets before you. What is God? There's your vision. What has he set before you? Run that race. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You see it? So, so we're running this race, but we're looking to something. Looking to something. We're looking to Jesus, who is the author. He started our life. He's going to finish the thing, right? He's the one that died for us on that cross. Now look at verse 23, Ephesians 4. Watch the next, very next thing, what it says. Okay, 22 said, put off the old man. Put off the former conduct, right? Are y'all still with me? Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your noggin. Is that what you see? The spirit of your mind. Okay, don't miss this. All right. Eagles, when they're doing the removing the feathers, guess where they start? With the head. Okay, they start with the head. They start right there. It's, we're taking reach. You, you know how they can get them neck. You like that. See, that's what they're doing. They start with their head. And I was going, man, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that awesome? Like, this makes so much sense. Because our mind, our noggin is the battlefield, church. Yeah. It's the battlefield, right? It's, it, it's where we say, it's where we stop it or we let it in. Yeah. Hmm? You're either going to stop it with your mind or you're going to let it in with your mind. So your mind is your security guard. Make sense? Yeah. Your, your mind is your security guard. Okay? So when the thought comes in and you're tempted to do that thing, the old stuff, right? Then you're either going to let that in or you're going to stop it right there. See, there's the choice because that's when it's either going to become sin or not. Yeah. Right? The temptation is not sin. The thought is not sin. It's what you do with that. And then when you do it and you do it and you do it, what does it become? Habit. Habitual, right? You see it? Okay. Again, think of the pain that Jesus went through for that sin. That's what I've been doing lately. Every time that thought or that, that thing comes to me that, that tempts me to do whatever, right, I think about the price that it took to pay for that sin. And like, mm, okay, he was crushed for my iniquity, right? The chastisement that was put on him brought me peace. The pain that was put on him brought me peace. And I ain't, gonna, I ain't even going to lie to y'all. That really, really helps me. So, eagles are created to soar above the storm. Okay? If they're created to soar above the storm, how are they going to do it with old feathers, weak feathers, and dead feathers? They won't ever do it. So they start plucking them out from their head down. They start from their head and they go down. And they remove what is holding them down. See, an eagle with old feathers, weak feathers, and dead feathers, they're like a grounded backyard chicken. They can't even get over the chicken wire. Y'all seen them chickens? Y'all ain't even had some chicken. All they do is peck around on seeds and worms. Okay, how silly would it be to have an eagle inside your chicken wire fence that can't get over the chicken wire because he's, dra he's, he's bounded by the elements. He's just, oh, I can't get over that chicken wire. Knowing that he is created to soar. Y'all yeah. hear me? Above the storm. Now, you, yeah. there can be, still be the storm, but then you can get above it. Right. Hello. Read between the lines here. See, the reason why the eagle's in the chicken yard is because he's got a chicken head. It starts with our head. It starts with our choice. It's, your head's either going to stop it or it's going to let it go. What's it going to do? It's sad to see an eagle who is created to soar by God scratching around in a chicken pen eating seeds and worms like a chicken. Because, listen, he thinks he's a chicken. Right? And why does he think he's a chicken? Because he's been hanging around with the chickens. And he won't remove what's holding him back. And what's holding him back is his mindset. It's his mindset. So here's what I'm saying. Read between the lines here. We cannot ever fly like an eagle. We can't ever soar like an eagle when we think like a chicken. Everybody go. 
Or, <laughs> that was good. That was good. Or, wait a minute, don't forget what we've been talking about on Wednesdays. Or you're like a buzzard eating dead things. Buzzards are God's maintenance crew. But that's, their, that's what they're created to do. Eat a dead thing. Eagles are not. And I promise you, you're not. Did I tell you, I told the Sunday, uh, Monday crew, you know, what a, you know what a group of buzzards is called? And I ain't even lying. You can go look this up. A committee. <laughs> Committees, all they do is sit around and talk about dead things and eat dead things. And they want to drag, they want to drag. Listen, a buzzard wants to drag an eagle to breathe right beside him to eat dead things too. How many of your friends are trying to drag you? I know the devil's trying to drag you to be a part of that dead thing. We can't, be, we can't soar on wings like eagles, like Isaiah says, with old, weak, and dead things holding us back. I'm almost finished. Let me take you one more spot. 2 Corinthians. Go left if you're in Ephesians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me read this. We'll be done. Maybe. No, I'm taking one more spot. Okay. Somebody needs to hear this. If you struggle with fear, you struggle with depression, you struggle with anxiety, you struggle with habits that are holding you back, you have to hear this scripture right here. This is what helped me. Many of you know that I went four years struggling with panic attacks, with anxiety, and I can't explain to you how that handcuffed me and kept me from being anybody. It took me away from my family. It took me away from what God has called me to be because I was scared. I would sleep in the hospital parking lot a lot of nights because I was afraid that I was going to die. <laughs> what? If I'm going to die, I'm going to die, right? But, but I thought if I started losing my breath, I'd like I'd run into the emergency room. I guess it brought me comfort to sleep in the... Y'all know what I'm talking about. It brought me comfort to sleep in the hospital parking lot in my truck. When my comforter is Jesus Christ, I'm sleeping in the parking lot of the hospital. If that's not a lie of the devil that can clip your wings, I don't know what is. Verse 5, 2 Corinthians 10. Casting down arguments. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about between you and your wife, you and your husband. I'm talking about arguments of the enemy. He's in your head and he's saying stuff. You this, you this, you're, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. It says that you can just cast those down. Any high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You don't know who you are in Jesus Christ, don't you? Okay? You're a son of God. You're a child of God. You're a daughter of God, right? Okay, when them lies start coming in, like you're going to die... You can't breathe or you whatever. You just fill in the blank. Whatever you struggle with there. It says you bring every thought into captivity and make it obey Jesus. Okay? Here comes the thought. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do that. Or you are this. Or this is going to happen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Right? When those thoughts come, you go, all right, then. And you take them into captivity. Right? You catch them. Don't reserve them because here's what we'll do. A lot of us will take a thought and then we'll reserve it for later too. Okay, I don't have time to think on that right now, but I'll think on it later. It ain't worth reserving. That thought is not worth reserving. Catch it. Make it obey Jesus Christ. Grab your word and say, listen, the Bible says to cast that mess down. Yeah. Right? That's why it's good to know the scripture because you can come back and you say, hey, that, that's a lie because this, this is the truth right here. And you can catch it, pluck it out. That's how you pluck out those thoughts. Is this making any sense? Listen, here's what those thoughts do. They cut canals and channels in your mind. And yet, here's, why they cut, here's what they do when they cut. Who knows that if you cut a channel that stuff's going to use it to flow through it? You know, when you're out there, you, you're at the deer lease, and you cut you a new road, and then you go back and you look at it after it rained, there's deer tracks in that road. Why is there deer tracks in the road? Well, you just made them a, a road. You just gave them an easy, they don't have to go through the briars, right? They can come down the road. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just the way my mind. These channels in your mind. 
make it easier for the next bad thought. Does this make sense? Because you've allowed that channel, you've allowed that ditch. You, you've seen water erode something over and over and over. It, it makes a canal. Bad thoughts over and over will make a canal in your mind and it will have you set into that way of thinking. That is not good for you. Fill in the ditch. Here's your ditch filler. Here is the new ground. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. Shed what's holding you back. Just like a snake sheds its skin. Right? Shed what's holding you back. Shed devil's lies. Shed their excuses. Examine yourself. See, okay, is this worth my future? You can do a little, little risk. Isn't that what the big businesses do? They have risk assessments. Okay? Assess that risk. Okay? Is this worth my family? Is this worth my life? Whether I'm going to let it in or not. Does it fit God's vision for my life? Here's what I want to close. I'm going to close with two scriptures and we're done. I promise you. Okay? Because i got to take you here. Okay, this is, the first one's in Mark 2. The other one's in Jeremiah 1. You can turn there or you can watch the screen. Look at the screen. Mark 2. I'll make these quick. See, I'm talking about making them quick when I'm telling you this stuff will change your life. Why do I want to make it quick when it'll change your life? Devil. Hush, devil. Anyway. I can't believe y'all come. Anyway, <laughs> watch this. Somebody needs to hear this right here. Mark chapter 2, verse 22. It says, nobody puts new wine into an old wine skin. Now, I know we are not don't really know really about wine skins, but they didn't carry around their wine or their Coca-Cola or Dr. Pepper in, in skins, right? They, they made animal skins. They clean out, on it, get the skin. Hair out, obviously. You don't want to be drinking hair. And they clean the hair out, and they make the skin, and that's what they, with no leaks, and they put the wine in it, right? Yeah. Now, over time, that skin, if they don't tan it right, and you tan it with the brains, by the way. Ain't that right, Jesse? Anyway, boy, y'all crazy. <laughs> anyway, it's amazing. Like, the animal has its own way of tanning its own hide, its brains. Anyway, that tans the hide. Anyway, why are I getting off on this stuff? Wine skins. Okay, you don't want to put new wine in an old wine skin. Because it'll bust. Why, why would you want to do that? Okay, see your new life as new wine. And your body is being renewed like an eagle. You're born again to walk in Jesus Christ. So don't let your old ways be in a new body. Amen. Hmm? Or new ways in an old body. Yeah. Give your body to Jesus. Give your mind. Listen, you know what wholeness, the definition of wholeness is this. We're made up into three parts. A body, a soul, and a spirit. Yeah. God wants all three of you. All three of you. No wine, new wine, put them in only in the new wine skin. That makes sense? Okay, last one. That's it. Jeremiah. When you find it, come help me. Preach all to know where the Bible is. Okay, I got it. I got it right here. Jeremiah 1, verse 10. Okay. God has put Jeremiah over rebuilding, right? So today, you may be in here and you're like, okay, it's time to rebuild. It's time to rebuild. God is really speaking to you and he's like, okay, we're going to get this old stuff out and we're going to rebuild. Okay, let me tell you what it takes to rebuild. It's right here out of God's word. I have set this day over you, verse 10. Jeremiah 1, verse 10. Set this day over you, nations and kingdoms, nations and over the kingdoms. Watch this. Don't miss any of these because you've got to do it like this. To root out. Somebody say root out. Pull down, destroy, throw down, build and plant. There you go. Is that making any sense? First of all, you got to root it out. You got to root it out. You got you to you get in there. What does root mean? It means get to the source of your problem. What is the root problem of your addiction? 
If you don't know how to root, go on YouTube and look at hogs. They get in there and root it out because they want the root. Right? Okay. After you root it out, then it says pull it down. Because when you, when you remove the root, if you, okay, who in here knows that when the root dies, you can pull the tree down? Yeah. It, it, and it, sometimes it just falls over the road. Here's what happens. When you are going down the road and you see a dead tree laying in the road, you got to think one thing. Hey, the root was dead. When the root dies, it falls down. Make sense? Okay. What in your life do you need to root out so it'll fall down? Then it says you need to destroy that thing. Don't just root it out and let it fall and let it lay there. No, burn it. Remove it. And then you can just get out there and just throw it down. You, you, a lot of you in here, you grew up and you love to fight. You love to throw down. No, take that same energy and throw down your old life. There's your fight. Your fight is against your old man. And it says, die, die daily. Let your old man die daily. Amen. Throw that thing down. Why? Because you got something new going on. And it's called Jesus. And it's called a new life in Jesus. So we're going to begin to build and plant. In other words, I'm going to build around. Allow God to put a wall around what he's planting in my life. And the enemy is not going to come in and destroy what God is planting in my life. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Let me challenge you before we pray. I, 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 A lot of us play the blame game. We try to blame other situations. We try to blame circumstances. We try to blame other people on why we are where we are. It's time to look in the mirror because nine times out of ten it's you that's standing in your own way. truly believe that you're here today because God wanted to tell you it's time to pluck out what's old and weak and dead. Things that you don't need anymore. Things that you may have brought from your old life into your new life. And he says, listen, you don't need it anymore. It's time to root out. It's time to pull down. Destroy and throw it down. Because God has wanted to build something in your life. He's ready to plant you today for you to go from glory to glory. Can you shed what's holding you back? Jesus came to set the captive free. You're not, you're not arrested and chained to this thing. You may think you are, and the devil's saying, hey, look, you're chained up, but listen, you got the wrong perspective. Look at it through Jesus' eyes. But he says the chains are broken. That thing doesn't run you. If, 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 if it's time to fight. Your old man does not run your life. Let him have it. The devil is a liar. Time to shed those excuses. I just wonder if anybody in here is ready to run the race. You're ready to run with endurance the race that Jesus has set before you. To do that properly, you got to do business right now and hinder anything that's hindering you, lay it aside. And it may be stuff that you borderline like. Listen, you won't like it. Once you get away from it, you'll see it for what it is. So many addictions that I've seen fall in people's life, they end up hating that thing. 
and they were, but they were blinded in it because they were in darkness. Listen, let that light, let that light shine in there today and show you the real meaning behind that. It may be the beautiful, most beautiful thing in the world when you're looking through these eyes, but when you look through God's eyes, it's a screaming demon looking at you. Because all it is there for is to steal, kill, and destroy. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this word. Lord, I pray for your power. Your power to shake things off. To lay aside things. To pluck these old feathers out. Anything that's old and weak and dead in our life, Lord. Let it fall. In Jesus' name, let it fall. Those in here that are just weighed down with the elements. Whatever it is, their busy life, their thoughts, their fears, their worries, Lord. We see today in your word that that is not of you. And we can cast that argument down. And we can take that thought captive. Because of what you've done for us, Jesus. Your redemption paid for every sin, past, present, future, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for taking those painful hits and punches. Lord, thank you for your skin being ripped off your body because that's what brought us peace. And that shows the love of a Savior. It shows the love of the Lord. Lord, what you have for us is unstoppable. It's incredible. It's overwhelming. It's hard for us to understand it. And we just stand in all of that, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, if there's anybody in here living less than who you've called them to be, Lord, I pray they would step up today and be the man, the woman that you've created them to be. Lord, I pray that the young ones in here today that are here that would learn to shed what's holding them back, what's keeping them from being who you've created them to be. Lord, let us sing a new song. Proclaim ourselves as new wine because of our Jesus. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. If y'all would stand. Guys, I would encourage you to take advantage of this time right here. Yes, this platform up here we use as an altar. It's a good place to put feet to what's going on in your mind right now. Maybe... Maybe it's best that you do get out of your chair and you come and you, you get on this altar. Maybe you bring your wife with you. Maybe you bring your hub, husband with you. Things that y'all been struggling with. And in your mind, leave it right here. Picture this as the feet of Jesus. It's not the feet of Jesus, but picture it as the feet of Jesus. And you leave what is holding you back right here on this altar. And if we really do this, there won't be a place anywhere up here. Because I know, I know, I know we're carrying around stuff today that doesn't need to be there. If you need the strength to do it, you ask the Lord. He's the one that gives you the strength. Maybe there's somebody in here that, that you're at, I need to go make it right. I don't know. Only you know. Maybe you're here this morning and you've given your life to the Lord in the past, but you're ready to, 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 to lay aside the weight of who you've become and step back into who you're called to be. And maybe you want to re, just recommit your life to the Lord and start anew. Pour this new wine into new wineskins. Do business with the Lord today. And when you do, then go back to your seat and worship. It's a battle cry. It's a cry of victory. They 
we have been redeemed, that Jesus is Lord. And that we win. It's not a mystery that we win. We win if we're in Jesus. You can't win on your own, no. <coughs> your success, any success that you have is because of Jesus. Any victory you have is because of Jesus. Thank Him for it. Any food that's laying on your table, thank Jesus for it. Any roof over your head, shoes on your feet, it's because of Jesus. It's His grace. The breath in your lungs because of grace. Don't act like He's not there. Give Him all the glory. Give Him first place in your life. 